I think today there is a lot of attention paid to making peace between science and religion and saying they are not opposed to one another. Now Stephen Jay Gould wrote a, a book about this and he talked about uh, non-overlapping magisteria. So science was about facts and the world around us, religion was about morality and, uh, and that sort of thing, and they were non-overlapping. Therefore there need be no conflict between them. Well, all well and good, but once the religion says, I believe in the virgin birth, that is a scientific statement, not a religious statement. And if you are praying for the healing of your sick child, uh, you are asking for the suspension of the laws of nature. So you are asking for God to stop the world, do something, and then perhaps withdraw again. So to say that they are non-overlapping is simply not true. They do overlap. Religion is constantly making scientific statements. The resurrection is a scientific statement. If one has to, to say, well, we must get some sort of reconciliation, we, it, we can't go on like this. A lot of people feel that way. Uh, I, I really don't know what to say because of course we would like there to be uh, reconciliation. But if somebody is going to compromise religion or science, who is going to compromise? How on earth, shall I say, could science compromise and say, well, E is equal to MC squared save for the intervention of the deity. And I don't think people can do that. So if there's going to be a compromise, it's going to be the church and religion that is going to have to make the compromise. And if you look at the history of science, it is always the church that has had to, one doesn't want to say this, but back down. The church has to concede, yes, the world is round. Yes, the sun is at the middle. And it's the church that science has never had to concede any point to religion. And that, I think, is very significant. Now, how could we expect that history suddenly to turn around and scientists to say, well, okay, E is equal to MC squared, say, for the intervention of the deity. How will we know when it's the deity that is intervening and not perhaps another natural law of which we know nothing now? It's like saying the Big Bang. The Pope a while back said, uh, what happened after the Big Bang, that's science. What happened before the Big Bang is religion, and I'll tell you about that. But why do we suppose that what happened before the Big Bang was not something material exactly as happened after the Big Bang? Why does it have to be supernatural or spiritual? And uh, so I, I, I think the idea of reconciliation is attractive, but it's, it's not going to work. Religious scientists and people that I've met who are, I mean, highly intelligent people, when you start questioning them about their religion, very often it comes down to the vague sense of Wordsworth on Westminster Bridge. They think that there is an, a sort of aura of spirituality. But if by spirituality you mean spirit beings like God and the dead and the devil, then they back off. They, they're not so, uh, so keen on that. And I think they also have the view that um, if they're Oxbridge, we don't want to lose the chapel evensong. And I have to, when I'm there in, in Cambridge, I go to Evensong. And I don't think the baby has to go out the window, or down the plug hole, I should say, with, um, uh, with religion. Uh, one, they're, the Jewish people talk about secular Jews, and the secular Jews that I've spoken to recognize their heritage, but they don't actually believe that the Red Sea parted to let Moses through, and so forth. 
And I think that you've got to have the concept today of secular Christians who will go to Evensong at King's and uh, come away feeling better, better than they did when they went there. But they don't believe uh, in a spirit being who is tinkering with the synapses of their brains.